All right, guys, before we get started, let's make sure we've got some audio working over here. I just started my last show. I went for 10 minutes because <laughs> I'm used to everything being set up and it was set up on my end. But for whatever reason, I lost audio over on, um, I guess, on the YouTube side of things. Oh, well, little gremlins. OK, good. You guys can hear me. Awesome. That's great, man. Thank you. Sorry about that little hiccup. Like I said, man, I set up my show the same way every week and everything was cool on my end. I was just rolling with it. And uh, then I realized <laughs> there was no audio. So thanks for coming back. We're all good. Looks like you guys can hear me. Welcome back. Thanks for being here at the show, uh, actually, too. This is KJ's What Happened. I'm KJ. I usually start with a joke. I'd started with one, but you guys didn't hear it. So I'll go ahead and tell it to you again. There was this artist and he had a lot of his art hanging up in a gallery and he was walking around just watching all the people looking at his art. And after a little while, he went up to the gallery owner. And he just asked him, he said, hey, have, has anybody inquired about any of my art? And the owner was really pleased to tell him. He's like, well, yeah, actually, he, he did. I've got good news and bad news on that front. He's like, oh, he, he did. Who? Who? What happened? What's the, what's the good news? So what the good news is. There's a man that was here earlier is walking around staring at all of your art. And he came over to me and he asked me, he says, does art appreciate after the artist dies? And I was like, well, yeah, absolutely. It really does. And so that guy's eyes lit up and he bought every single one of your paintings. And the artist was thrilled. He's like, well, that's fantastic news. Then what's the bad news? And the gallery owner said, well, the bad news is that man was your doctor. So there's our joke. <laughs> all right. Okay. Hey, I have got... Oh, now I see people saying no sound again. I know you're kidding around. Okay, let's go ahead and jump into it because we got a lot of stuff to get into. Let's go right over here and get our screen up. And there we go. Let's get started. Thanks once again, guys, for being here. Shout out again to the uh, to the moderators here. Shout out to our friends overseas and everybody else. And also a huge shout out to my Patreon and PayPal supporters, guys. Thank you very, very, very much. All right. Let me see. Am I ready over here? Yeah. Okay. We're good. Here we go. This is a good one. This is a crazy one, actually. Facebook global planning leader reveals need for government in intervention. This is a big one. This was uh, one of them there, uh, Project Veritas, I believe. If it'll play for us. Hopefully it will. This is on brand new tube. I don't use this very often. Got it. Cookies. All right. Maybe we should just reload the page here. Now let's see what happens. <clears throat> the clip will, will uh, here we go. The clip will speak for itself. This guy's, he's up there hanging out with the big wigs. All right. He's up there with the Zuckerbergs and, uh, Little Jack over there at Twitter and people like that. He's this is one of the big wigs. And look at what he's saying here. That Facebook is doing a lot of damage in the world. Facebook and Google are no longer our companies, they're countries. They must be stopped. The government needs to step in and break up Google and Facebook. It's a better thing for the world. The single biggest thing is this company needs to be broken up. No king in the history of the world has been the ruler of two million people. But Mark Zuckerberg is. Today, Sanjay Veritas, undercover journalist, have exposed another high-level executive at Facebook. I would break it up, and I would remove Zuck as the CEO. So Mark Zuckerberg is very concerned with health. In fact, his uh, the Chan Zuckerberg oh, yeah. initiative. I'm fascinated and terrified at the same time. I prefer you should be. <laughs> it's a fight. It's, it's, it's eugenics. Uh, and I don't know any way to stop it. I think the genie is out of the bottle. Which is why a lot of shit goes down because people aren't paying attention. I can I can target racist people using just those three uh, it's that easy. Because data is very powerful. Give me five things about you and I I can pretty much figure out everything yeah. else. Yeah, is essentially evolving to become like human intelligence and then it's going to go beyond human intelligence. And at that point Humans are expendable. Okay. It's not like the AI will try no, to like, kill us. They just won't care because it'll be it'll be so superior that it'll be like these people don't matter. So yeah. I might be killing hundreds of ants when I walk in the park. I don't know and I don't care. Mm -hmm. It's not a thing that I think about. 
we will be like those ads. What if the tech companies like Google and Facebook remain unchecked? What is, where do we go from there? What's going to happen? Well, what's going to happen? Bad things. We confronted Thomas, asked him to join our team of insiders. Here's what happened. I just want to let you know that I, I intend to release our conversations to the American people. You shouldn't do that. Are you interested in interviewing on the record with us to clarify your statements to the American people? Wow. Right? Wow. This is all stuff we talk about around here and have been for many years. People have probably called you crazy and kooky for talking about some of this stuff, but here you have the Facebook global planning lead. All right. This is a guy that sits at the table. He knows. He knows. Even he's saying AI is out of control, right? Uh, this clip right here, this was at a French awards show, and this is an artist. I don't know who she is, but she was protesting against the lockdowns, and she uh, took off all of her clothes. I probably can't show you that on here on YouTube. I can't. Of course, there's literal porn <laughs> in some of the corners on YouTube you can find. But, you know, we can't, you know, around here, right? I watch some of it. C'est plus cinéphile, là. C'est carré au bal du diable. Ça va? Oui, c'est C'est trop trash aussi. Bah, J'ai le dernier, après, il n'y a plus, hein? And that's probably about all we can watch. There you go. Okay, that's fine. We get it. We got it. Moving on. Hill reporter suggests Democrats could use hologram to handle Biden's public speeches as if they're not already doing that and worse. According to oh, the Hill reporter, Cheryl Atkinson suggested that the White House could use hologram technology to help Bo Jiden deliver public speeches because this skeleton is just barely strung together at this point. But he's the most popular president in U.S. history. So I'm told. According to Atkinson, officials within the administration are mulling over far-fetched speculation that upon further examination starts to look almost like it is not completely outside the realm of possible. The journalist highlighted how AI and deep fake technology is becoming so indistinguishable from reality that it can make people who didn't say or do something look very much like they said or did the thing, <clears throat> which we know this. We've already seen so many strange anomalies around this character right here. I've shown that video a few times. I think I even put it in my last video on YouTube and Tia Twaki of his nose going sideways. You guys remember that? It's not normal. It doesn't normally happen. There's the video where it looks like he's literally wearing a mask, like there's a line underneath his or on his neck where the skin is even a different tone underneath it just to name a few. There's the one where he was at the memorial without his mask on. This is right after he got placed. And he looks like an NPC character. It doesn't even look like a human being that's in there. People are recording it straight from the news on their TVs that this, in this clip. And they're even they're saying it looks like an alien. It looks like a monster. What is that? It doesn't look real. You know, so there's a lot of strange things already happening around this character. Very strange. But he's the most popular president in American history. Video fartsy. Sorry, guys. I don't want to. I don't want to be disrespectful to the good doctor. Sometimes I might have trouble pronouncing his name. But fartsy admits there is no science behind continued lockdown. Of course, every day it's something new out of this guy. <laughs> every day. He's another one. There's that clip that the was rolling around last week where he's talking and it looks like he's wearing a mask, like underneath where his neck connects with his collar. Something's off there. And I found another one this week, same anomaly on the same person. And I'm not sure which clip it is, but I'm sure we'll stumble across it here in a while. Hopefully I put it up here unless this is. We know from the Biden administration that they say it, it will make its decisions based Let's on see. science. What's the science? behind not saying it's safe for people who have been vaccinated, received two doses, to travel? You know, that's a very good question, John, and, and the CDC is carefully... No, it's not this one. Direction. See, that looks a little um, more normal. You know, 
when, right. when Dr. Walensky made the announcement a day or two ago. Anyway, we don't need to hear what this guy's going to say. I mean, it's just, it's, it's one thing one week, it's something different the next, right? Just uh, changing week to week. Stanford medical professor, lockdown's worst public health mistake in last 100 years. Sure, you bet. Stanford's Dr. J. Bhattacharya told Newsweek that the C lockdowns are the single worst public mistake, health mistake in the last 100 years. Medical professor warned that lockdowns are disproportionately impacting the poor and making wealth inequality worse. He also explained how the areas that Im imposed the most draconian lockdowns didn't see the most success in controlling the virus. So as I stand behind my comment that the lockdowns are the single worst public health mistake in the last 100 years, we'll be counting the catastrophic health and psychological harms imposed on nearly every poor person on the face of the earth for a generation. At the same time, they have not served to control the epidemic in the places where they have been most vigorously imposed. In the U.S., they have at least protected the non-essential class from the sea while exposing the essential working class to the disease. The lockdowns are trickle-down epidemiology, he says. Yeah. It's a mess. It's a mess. It's a plan. It's a plan. It's a plan. Plan-demic. Hollywood lawyer claims Greta Thunberg is writing letters to Kaczynski. <laughs> okay. An infamous Hollywood lawyer and gossip blogger claims the Swedish climate activist has been communicating with, they used to call him the Unabomber, via prison letters. The incredible assertion was made by the NT, the name given to the person who runs the Crazy Days and Nights blog. According to the Daily Dot, over the last 15 years, NT has made a name for themselves by outing celebrities they claim are tied to prominent scandals. NT has been credited with, among other things, dropping details about disgraced producer Weinstein years prior to his public undoing. In the blog, NT claims, the authorities have intercepted correspondence between two people, a young foreign, foreign woman who has been in the news a lot the last few years for speaking her mind on a particular problem and an infamous individual whose time in the public eye was before she was born. The infamous individual wrote something a long time ago that became public that the young woman agrees with. She's been discussing both theory and implementation with him in the letters. He then names the two individuals in question as Greta and Kaczynski. A philosophical alliance between the two wouldn't be that out of the ordinary, given Kaczynski's vehement opposition to industrialization and his concern for environmental destruction. Kaczynski is idolized by many anarchists and green activists. However, despite his violent tactics, his manifesto, industrial society, and its future has also resonated with many on the right because it blames leftism as one of the most widespread manifestations of craziness in this world. Interesting. All right. Interesting, interesting stuff. There you go. <clears throat> That'll be one to watch. That's going to be one to watch. Man arrested faces $250,000 fine after refusing to wear a mask, urinating in flight cabin while allegedly drunk. Okay, so the mask thing, I could make an argument. But peeing in the flight cabin while drunk, all right, that's another story. I don't think I can help you out on that one. So let's move on. Nasty Czech or Czechoslovakian Gestapo violently tackle a man for not wearing his mask while his toddler weeps. It's a madness. It is. It's a, oops. This website does that sometimes. Here we go. But it's a madness. It's a grand delusion. Wrestlers spraying disinfectant in the faces of those not wearing masks, forcing them to comply. 
Mexico City. Está muy buena porque está preveniendo los más contagios. Todo no, se me olvidó. Ha habido tantas situaciones que han pasado en el mundo, pero eh, creo que nosotros nos sentimos comprometidos con la sociedad. La gente nos, nos busca, la gente. Eh, le llama la atención la máscara y creo que eso también hace trabajar para trabajar mucho para que esto termine. Just propaganda, though, right? It's all just propaganda. I mean, it's cute. Don't get me wrong. I, I think it's adorable. Pop star attends racial reeducation camp. Well, that's going to be in store for lots of people, I believe, very soon. Weekly for some insensitive things, she says, when she was a young teen. We'll read a little bit before we watch here. Pop superstar Camila Cabello says that she's been attending weekly racial healing sessions so she can, quote, get connected or corrected, get corrected, unquote. Her explanation about the sessions come after Internet sleuths. Oh, so she, she got canceled. Internet sleuths revealed the singer's old social media posts showing her using racial slurs when she was a teen. It created a space where I was held accountable, she says. You get corrected. You have homework and you learn. That's how you move forward. Now I know better so I can do better. You recognize your privilege. That's how people are probably going to be talking after this stuff, to a degree. It's kind of like vacant and spacey. You get corrected. You have homework and you learn. She also says, as I learned more about other people's experiences in the world, I was like, how do I help the people who are on the front, front lines of dismantling systems that create oppression? Which is a question most of us ask. How do I help people who are on the front lines of dismantling systems that create oppression? And how do I bridge that with my own personal journey with mental health and healing, she says. This sounds like a cult. How do we bridge these gaps and fix these things? Only through Christ and Christ alone. Hey guys, today I'm passing over my Instagram to another Healing Justice grantee to learn about how they're prioritizing their mental wellness. So allow me to introduce Freedom Inc., which is a group from Wisconsin that works with communities of color to achieve social justice through organizing. Freedom Inc., take it away. Hello everyone, my name is Mai Tom, my pronouns are she or hers, MT, and I'm a youth justice... The Rise of the Rainbow Children. Freedom Inc. is a nonprofit organization that works with Black, Hmong, and Khmer communities to end violence in our communities. That's in violence, like, in every community. And it may take years of work. Over time, organizers may get very tired of working so hard and seeing all... Okay, I think we get it. It's just no. more of this... It's all part of that Marxist revolution. It's a revolution... This one's really, really wild right here. Because, you know, we've been um, here on the show for quite a while. We'll find these videos of these light pillars, right? You've seen the light pillars. And sometimes there's an easy explanation. It's just the mist and it's the lights at night, whatnot, kind of glistening. And there's some of those easy to explain ones. And then there's some really weird ones that aren't so easy to explain. There's one last week we saw a pillar kind of a light pillar, I guess, or some kind of a pillar extending all the way past the clouds, it looked like. And it was right on top of an old Russian church. So that was pretty weird. Remember that one? Anyway, this one's pretty cool, too. Shaq uh, from the uh, general insurance commercials. Also a Freemason. But this was his video he, he shot here. Let's check this out. Wait, is this playing? Oh, oh, there we go.
I think that was just a car driving by, but let's see. Let's set, what did he say here? Speeds up at the end as if he's in a panic. I didn't notice that. It's all right, but it is a darn good capture. Pretty wild, huh? Pretty wild. That's one of those that, you know, you can't just say, ah, it's just, it's lights bouncing off of particles in the air. You know, it's, that's one of the, the cool ones, the weird ones. All right, this is YouTube channel Public Freakouts Unleashed. There's all their stuff. Um, they always do good compilations, obviously, of public freakouts. And we all, we've talked about how the whole Karen thing itself is kind of a psyop. It's a way to quickly uh, silence people. Oh, that's just a Karen, right? Even if they're saying something that matters, and a lot of times they are. A lot of times it's people who are protesting lockdowns and masks are being called Karens by the masked, right? So we see that's a whole thing now. But anywho, that being said, let me see what I was looking for on here. I think this is one of them. Get out now. Yeah, this guy wasn't wearing his mask. Get out now. Get out. Get out. Get out. Just more of the mask kind of madness stuff. I felt like there was something else though on here, but I, I don't think I could find it. Maybe, maybe this isn't the one, but there was a particular one I was looking for. I wanted to show you. Um, 36 Crown V patients evacuated from Paris by train. Let's read here. The patients all treated in intensive care units are being transferred to several hospitals in Brittany as West France is less impacted by the, you know what, the trains are kitted out with medical material. Da, 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 da. I feel like I had this up because I, I think these people were having reactions to the V is what this was, but I, I it's not written on here. So I was probably looking at this somewhere else and just clicked on this and anyway my bad maybe i've got the actual news story up somewhere here this was at i believe i'm looking this is oh this is galveston texas um i think it, yeah it's bank of america but it's not the bank of america with all the crazy murals in it which many of us have talked about throughout the years i thought that's what it was at first anyway this still is uh pretty crazy z it happened about six days ago march 12th woman arrested for refusing to wear a mask at galveston bank let's check this out hello I'll say, if, if that's you leave, you have to leave. My money is in this bank, and I'm going to take it out. Well, then you have to abide by the rules, that, and you have to have a mask on. Is, this is a state? It's not. Exactly. Businesses have the right to refuse service, even if you're not wearing that's a mask. That's their choice. My money out. Awesome. Okay. Well, you need to go and get a mask, and then take okay. your money out. You're not allowed to do... Ma'am, listen, minutes. we're going to do this the easy way or the hard way. What are you going to do? Arrest me? Yes, for intruding on premises. <laughs> That's hilarious. That's exactly what it is. Yeah. And you believe in this? I believe in it. Do you believe in it? The laws, yes. The law says that I do not have to wear a mask. You don't, not in public, my but you're not in public. You're not in my, public. Yes. I'm not going to argue with you about place. this. This is not a public okay, place. I'm this is a private mine. business. No, you're business. not. We're going to go outside. Are you serious? 
Do I look like I'm kidding? Well, I don't know. Because let's, let's walk, go obviously walk outside. you've got some issues. I've got issues. That you're taking away okay. people's human rights. Okay. Oh, let's go outside. Now he's going to shoot me, people. He's no. going to shoot me for trying not to breathe. Cool. Come cool. on, Come on, dude. Don't re oh, don't do that. Oh no. Do not touch me. Who do you think you are? Quite oh, back up, back up. Some old lady is getting handcuffed here. Ma'am, put you? your hands behind oh, your back. Say it. You don't stop resisting. Stop. Prisoners. Is anybody going to get real here? Really? Relax. No one's going to get real. Wow. Come on. And this will be the way people are treated that now, don't take V. Now you're smashing my arm into my private area. All this is just setting your it up, right? Area? Yeah. Put your hands behind your back. My hand is behind my back, sir. This one. Turn over on your stomach. Put your hand behind your back. I just wanted to buy some relax. carrots and some lettuce. No, you are not relaxed. Please not relaxed at all. Right here, people. Oh. Just wanted to buy some formula for my baby. Wow, what a bunch of sheep. Okay, someone's filming this, you're hurting me. Oh, I'm filming it. This is like, yeah, this okay. Like Stand up. Stand up. Okay. Stand yourself up. And how do you suggest, sir? Maybe I, not I, the V, but definitely the, the mark for sure. But we already see this happening incrementally. I need a new cover. Stand up. We're still just on the masks. Are you trying to speak Spanish to people? I do speak Spanish. Okay, well, stand up. <laughs> I think we pretty much get it, right? We get it. What the? Oh, okay. Um, this. This right here. Let me check the comments. I'm, I'm really curious because I'm thinking this is real. Oh, they turned the comments off. YouTube channel Noah Lindquist. And there's a link. And uh, anyway, here's the uh, here's the clip. I'm guessing this is real. I don't know. Maybe he did it just as a joke. I don't know. Noah Lindquist is named up there at the top, but let's just see what it is. Go get my vaccine and get back to my prime. Well, I never see. A vaccine made in quite so little time. We're gonna plan insane events like we couldn't do before. Once everybody gets their shots, the 20s they will roar. Thus far, a rather uninspiring thing. Oh, I just can't wait for no more isolation. With space. No more need for face masks. Oh, it's all a fight. With immunization. Oh, wait, come on. Free to socialize all day. Well, I do that anyway. No more COVID in our way. I'm skipping around because, again, I don't know if this is going to get a, you know, a copyright or something. Because this, like, this might be an original work from this. I don't know. But it looks professional. It looks like the real thing. And the the one character that's against the V is of course the dupe, you know, and nobody likes and he's getting knocked around. Um, it's interesting. You can, uh, I would even suggest looking this up for yourself. You could probably open another window while I'm talking and do that. Noah Lindquist is the YouTube channel. I just can't wait for V. I just can't wait to be King parody. Okay. Parody. It is a parody. That's for sure. Okay. Get it. Got it. All right. But who knows? I mean, there's no like dislike on. There's no comments. It'd be interesting to see what people are saying about this. We'll watch some more. For a start, if this is where America is headed, count me out. While you sheep wait for your doses, I'm a double dose of doubt. This liberal mind control is quite obscene. Oh, I just can't wait for vaccine. No Pfizer and Moderna have the key. Let's do it for the herd of humanity. We just can't wait for the key. We just All right. <laughs> I think you get it. Check it out for yourself. I, this is one of those, it really is a shame. 
comment section is turned off on this one. It'd be interesting to see what people are saying about this. Parody. So he's, he has it in the title, Parody. It's good, but it's it's such a clown world we're in. It's hard to, I mean, you couldn't you see that actually playing? I could see that on Disney Plus. You know, it's one of their new commercials or something, or a little bumper before the next clip or something, or next movie or next uh, episode. You get this little animation. If they did it, it I, you almost wouldn't be surprised, right? Be like, oh, well, yeah, that makes sense. Okay. Poll. Majority of Americans support restrictions on unveed people. That sucks. Majority of Americans support restricting the freedoms of people who have not taken the Crown V, according to Reuters survey released this week. According to the survey taken March 8th, and 9th, 2021, among 1,005 respondents, 72% view it as at least somewhat important to know if the people around them have been V'd for the C19. The survey listed a series of scenarios for everyday activities, including traveling on an airplane, enrolling in school, working out at the gym, and asked respondents to indicate if they agree that individuals should be required to be V'd before engaging in such activities. 63% of all respondents, for example, indicated that they indicated they either somewhat or strongly agree with require, requiring people to get the V before traveling on an airplane, compared to 32% who generally disagreed. Similarly, a majority of respondents, or 59%, said people should be required to get a V before enrolling in school. It says Democrats are far more likely to agree with that sentiment than Republicans, of course. Okay, so there's that. So we know that mindset's already out there too, right? Mindset's already out there. It's a dividing, right? It's a dividing line. Top Biden aide spills the beans. C was best thing that ever happened to the Dems. Of course, we see that. This professor warns that anti-racism is the new religion. Religion scholars agree and like it. Columbia University linguist John McWhorter argues that the new religion of anti-racism is reconstructing America's sense of morality, justice, education, personal expression, and national identity. In an excerpt from his, from his new book on neo-racists posing as, posing as anti-racists, published in Persuasion, the black scholar and atheist wrote, that anti-racism is a nonsensical new religion posing as wisdom and world progress. Many would argue with his assertion that anti-racism is a religion and that it poses a threat to a progressive America, but an interview program co-produced with Religion News Service might only take issue with McWhorter's second argument. Anti-racism is a spiritual practice, which is, de which is dedicated to confronting the wastest ideas embedded within ourselves started its second season in late January. I don't want to read the rest of it. It looks like it's probably going to be a long article. But if you would like to, it's on the College Fix. This professor warns that anti-racism is new religion. Australia, Australian health minister in critical condition just one day after the V the Australian health minister hospitalized cellulitis infection following the got that RNA there that's on 311 to 33 I have to look up news from 311 2021 and see if anything significant happened and think about that the one year anniversary of the launch of this whole thing 311 2020 so when the World Health Organization made it official. For the first time in four decades, Congress is forcing U.S. taxpayers to pay for that abortion. Uh, oops, <laughs> I almost said it. That operation, we shall not speak its name. U.S. House of Representatives gave final approval Wednesday to the nearly $2 trillion C relief bill that includes a boost in unemployment payments and stimulus checks for American families. The measure is controversial on many, many levels because it includes deficit spending and non-C pet projects, of course. Now there's an even bigger concern that's come up for pro-life Americans because the Hyde Amendment is notably absent from the massive spending bill. 
Once supported by Bo Jiden as senator, the amendment has been included in budget bills for roughly 40 years. It prevented federal tax dollars from being used to pay for that operation. We shall not speak its name. On Wednesday in the Senate, Oklahoma Republican James Lankford expressed his disappointment in the bill that he said violates the conscience or the conscience rights of many American taxpayers. Okay, we get it. We know. Yep. Yeah. Got it. New York City school pushes students to stop using mom, dad, and give up gender altogether. Oh, there's another 311. Okay. When you think the left can't get any crazier, they take that as a challenge. A New York City school that charges $57,000 a year has sent a guide to students and parents that challenges them to change their language and dump using terms like mom and dad to describe their parents. Grace Church School sent out a 12th Grace Church School. Okay. Grace Church School sent out a 12 page memo that contains the following. Instead of saying boys and girls, guys, ladies and gentlemen, say people, folks, friends, readers. Instead of saying sweetheart, honey, similar pet names, say child's name or child friend in the blue shirt. Instead of saying mom and dad, say grown-ups, folks, or family. Instead of husband, wife, boyfriend, girlfriend, say spouse, partner, significant other. Again, let's look at this. But everything's inverted. Everything's being changed. Everything's being stripped down, not just the statues, but our language, the way we communicate. All for what? <laughs> you know. Pope Francis, another great flood is coming. No, sir. No, sir. Well, there might be in New York City. Right? We've talked about that a lot throughout the years. People have had dreams of it, visions. It's embedded in a, in a lot of things, money, our entertainment, that there's going to be a wave over New York City, perhaps from a, a nuke that seems to be something we've seen coming. Again, it's embedded in a lot of things around us. And you can look it up. Many people have had visions of this, dreams of this, this wave over New York City. But we know that the world doesn't end with water. That's the rainbow is a promise, right? It's not going to be another flood. It's going to be fire. Be fire. He knows that. But he's all about inverting it all, too. This one. This one. It makes you cry. Pathetic Hollywood stars moved to tears by Bo Jiden's speech. Another March 11th news story. Democrats and far lefties have been so desperate for a president that's not orange man that they were literally crying tears of joy during the first presidential address to the nation by a mushmouth, low energy dinosaur named Bo Jiden. Here's just some of the tweets. Rob Reiner, thank God we have a real president. It makes you cry. 311. Oh, okay. So that happened. All right. So I guess. Yeah, so Biden must have done a speech or something, 311, I don't know. Another 311, it's so nice to have an empath instead of a psychopath. Josh Gad doing one eye symbol on his, uh, he's doing the all-seeing eye symbol, okay. John Cusack says, I think experience, time, maturity, suffering, losses, and at 78 years old, an attitude of what the F can they do or say at this point, all that matters a lot. See all these people, it's just... Yeah. Okay. We get it. <clears throat> we got it. Before the uh, COVID, little Billy Gates planned social media censorship of the V safety advocates with pharma, CDC, media, China, and CIA. Get out of here. This guy <laughs> with a mug like that. Get over here, little Billy. You've been naughty again, haven't you? March, March 12th, 2021, over the last two weeks, Facebook and other social media sites have deplatformed, it says me, so this is LifeSite News, which is a Christian site, deplatformed LifeSite and many other critics of regulatory corruption and authoritarian public health policies. 
So here's some fodder for those of you who have the eerie sense that the government industry pandemic response feels like it was planned even before there was a pandemic. The attached document shows that a cabal of powerful individuals did indeed begin planning the mass eviction of these skeptics from social media in October 2019, a week or two before C began circulating. That month, little Billy Gates organized an exercise of four tabletop simulations of a world C virus pandemic with other high ranking deep state people. The exercise, of course, is referred to as event two. O one. Gates co-conspirators included representatives from the World Bank, the World Economic Forum, Great Reset People, Bloomberg, Johns Hopkins University, Populations Center, the CDC, Chinese government, CIA, NSA. I mean, the list goes on and on and on. And uh, V maker Johnson and Johnson's in there. Good times. At Gates' direction, these Eminence's role played members of a pandemic control council, war gaming government strategies for controlling the pandemic, the narrative and the population. Needless to say, there was little talk of building immune systems, off the shelf remedies, or off patent therapeutic drugs and vitamins, but lots of chatter about promoting uptake of new patentable antiviral drugs and these. Pretty much says it all. That's on LifeSite. You want to go check that out. LifeSite News. Look up this headline here. And uh, it's a good one to share with people. That's a real eye-opener for people is uh, the event right here, right? I put that info in some of my videos. We cover it here on these shows from time to time. Um, it's a good one, though. It's a good eye-opener. Something you can show people. Say, hey, read this. Check this out. Oh, wow. You know, yeah, that was from three years ago. Huh? Yeah. What? Bo Jiden delivered a speech on anniversary of the COVID lockdowns. Only 7,141 tune in to the White House YouTube page for his very first address. This is a 311. 311 story. 33 and 311. Um, there it is. Yeah, 7,000 watching. See, look at that. That was 29 minutes into the stream. The uh, like to dislike ratio off the chain. We've shown how YT will actually fix these for uh, for this, this guy. And there you have it. There you go. The most popular president in U.S. history. Sarah Everard, Green Party's Baroness Jones, suggests 6 p.m. curfew for men. The peer tells the House of Lords such a move would make women a lot safer and discrimination of all kinds will be lessened. Baroness Jones told the House of Lords that such a move would, oh, we just read that, make women a lot safer and discrimination of all kinds be lessened. She vanished while walking home or sorry miss evard vanished while walking home to brixton south london from a friend's house on the 3rd of march detectives searching for the uh-oh 33 year old have since discovered human remains follows the arrest of a metropolitan police officer on suspicion of kidnap and uh murder i don't know um oh okay so i guess that that's why they're saying 6 p.m curfew now all men right Got to make sure all men, because all men are that guy that would do something really sick and deranged like that. Of course. Makes sense, doesn't it? <laughs> Oops. Let's refresh this. What is it, guys? I got to see Thomas Sandwood here. This is from Thomas Fan 01 YouTube channel. And it's uh, an, an anomaly we've seen on these shows quite a few times. There's something strange in the skies. And, okay, so first of all, um, it is one o'clock in the morning, like extremely dark. Like you can totally see, it's like really dark out. That's, that's the edge of my house right there. And that's the street lamp. I'm really confused as to why the sky is lit up. This is extremely confusing and kind of creepy. I'd love to know what on earth this is. 
I'd love to know what on earth that is. It's just huge. Like, you can totally see it. It spans all across right here. But everywhere else, it's dark as hell. And the moon's not out tonight. And if the moon was out, it would be over there. So I can tell you for a fact, it's not the moon. That's not the moon. And yeah, you may be seeing reflections like right over here. That's just from my camera reflecting the light. I'm just so confused. What the heck is that? Leave it in the comments below. Tell me what you guys think it is. Cause think about it. We've seen that, haven't we? The yellow, the purple, some of them changing colors, all different types, uh, week to week. So, you know, welcome to the club, I guess there, Thomas fan. Uh, you're definitely, uh, you're lucky to be able to see something pretty wild like that, but you're not alone. That's for sure. This one, um, sorry, my computer's acting up a little bit. Another UFO video. I can't pronounce that YouTube channel name, but I'm going to share their video. Here we go. What do you think? It's weird. It looks like, doesn't it? it? Looks like it's got a body and arms or something to it. Like that. That's weird. It's like the monsters or the aliens from uh, War of the Worlds, the Tom Cruise version. I saw that one. Weird. Anyway, if you want to go look at that one up, good luck spelling that. You can always freeze, you know, the frame, the uh, show, and just write that down in a search engine. All those words, <laughs> which uh, Istanbul says that I that I know. All right, there you go. Bizarre shaped UFO. Yeah, this is a short one. Uh, this is off Mavi Seven Seven Seven. I'm just going to show his first one here. Wow, it's way up there. Diamond. Whoa, that's such a good shot. Shapeshifters, interdimensionals. Demonic shapeshifters. They come to us as light. Shifting.
See, look. It's like got a few different colors going on, it looks like now, right? An orange, a blue, a green. It's got brown or something, a white or something in the middle. So this. There you go. It's crazy. Then to that. Hmm. Now it looks blue, black, like a big blue head with big black eyes. It's weird, right? It's crazy. All right, let's fix this. Of course, we have our Bigfoot news. I think last week we had that story in Oklahoma. They're offering it's like a million dollars if you can capture a Bigfoot alive. Maybe it's two million. Ex-soldier claims Bigfoot with special powers exists after Pal spots humanoid. Paranormal investigators claimed one of his team witnessed the legendary beast rumored to roam North America, but it vanished without a trace. Trey Hudson, who is director of the Oxford Paranormal Society and served in the U.S. military in Afghanistan as operations and counterterrorism officer, told Daily Star about some of the phenomena he sees with his team. He's been leading paranormal expeditions at a top secret location known only by its code name, The Meadow, and his new book, The Meadow Project, Explorations into the South's Skinwalker Ranch, has just been published, leaping to number one in Amazon's paranormal section. Over the years, Trey claims to have witnessed some truly bizarre things, and one of the expeditions has made him consider that Bigfoot could be more than flesh and blood and actually have special powers. That's not Bigfoot. I think that's the guy. A being described as similar in appearance to Bigfoot, also known as the Sasquatch, was allegedly spotted by a member of his team in the middle of the night in a chilling encounter. Recalling the event, Trey said at about 2 or 3 a.m., the witching hour, that evening he saw a white humanoid-type shape peering around a tree watching our camp. He went to get one of our team members who has a very sensitive piece of thermal equipment, a very expensive FLIR unit to see if she could detect the heat signature of this being. And by the time she woke up and gathered her wits and equipment and got out there, the entity or being was gone. I'm pretty sure that's just a uh, artist recreation. Even weirder, he said there was also no physical evidence of a figure or animal standing in the same spot when they investigated. Trey added, it's interesting to note many members of my team are also trained in tracking. We know how to track a person through the forest, look for footfalls, disturbances in the environment, compressed earth, compressed vegetation, etc. We went to the area where they had been, where they where they had seen this, looking for any disturbed vegetation, scuff marks, if the bark on the tree was disturbed, and we could find no evidence this creature was there in physical form. All right, cool. That's about it. That's all we get. Whoa. Whoa, I guess he had his nose. Look at that. Whew. China's first sex doll hotel sealed off by police with customers still inside. <laughs> what could go wrong? Cut off that nonsense. A man who opened two sex doll brothels catering to migrant workers in the southern Chinese city of Shenzhen Shenzhen says she has been forced to close them down. Lebo described his venture as China's first life-sized sex doll hotel. Customers paid 188 yuan, just over $20, for an hour of no-holds-barred fun with silicone hostesses. The first of his two sex doll hotels opened for business in 2018. It was sited in Shenzhen's Longgu district which is home to several major multinational companies, including the huge, super-secretive Foxconn plant, known for producing the key components for many Apple products, including the iPhone. 
Okay. Lee said he opened his hotel after reading that there were over 120,000 men working in the district's high pressure factories with few, if any, opportunities to relieve their desires. All right. Oh, but then it was so successful that he opened a second branch around half an hour's drive away, but both were forced to close down on dun 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 33, Thursday, March 11th. There you go. Okay. Moving on. This is the from uh, Ben Swan. You guys have ever heard of him? He kind of gained his own legendary status, I guess, among truth seekers many years ago. He is one of the few mainstream news people that talked about um, the issue surrounding pizza and kids and uh, creepy elite people, so-called elite. And I believe he lost his job at that place and all this other stuff. But throughout the years, he's just created his own thing. And he's still out there, uh, you know, doing it. So there you go. Good for, good for Ben Swan. This is on um, brand new tube. What every parent fears the most, lockdowns caused 100% increase in all the bad stuff for the kids. Let's uh, refresh this. I think that's what we got to do. There we go. We'll watch a little bit of this. I'm not sure well, how long it is. Children are no, pretty short. more likely to die from suicide than they are from the corona. New research on kids shows that self-harm and overdoses increased 91 to 100 percent over the past year. There are some incredibly important lessons to learn here. So let's get to them. I'm Ben Swan, and this is Truth in Media. about new research that shows the effect of lockdowns and the effect they've had on the mental health of teens and kids across the country. Children who are much more likely to commit self-harm since they've gone into these lockdown situations and been taken out of school. That's a very serious issue. We're going to get to all that in just a minute. But before we do, a shout out to our sponsor for this episode, Create pediatric mental health. The summary notes that kids self-harm and suicides have increased exponentially during COVID-19 lockdowns that have closed schools. The study found that there has been a 300% increase in young people coming to doctors because they try to hurt themselves. And that was found to be especially true in areas with strict COVID lockdown protocols. But some of the most stunning numbers that come out of this study include not only the numbers of kids who are attempting to commit self-harm, but where in the country it's happening in areas that have been the most strict in terms of their lockdown orders. Look at this. Claim lines for intentional self-harm as a percentage of all medical claim lines in the 13 to 18 age group increased 90.71% in March of 2020 compared to March of 2019. The increase was even larger when comparing April of 2020 to April of 2019, nearly doubling 99.83%. Comparing August of 2019 to August of 2020 in the Northeast for the age group of 13 to 18, there was a 333.93% increase yep. in intentional self-harm claim lines as a percentage of all medical claim lines, a rate higher than that in any other region in any month studied for that age group. So it is important to note that the area of the country that had the most severe group of young people, 13 to 18 years old, committing self-harm was in the northeast part of the country, the part of the country that also saw the most strict lockdown measures. And by the way, that still has not come out of many of these lockdown measures, not for businesses and certainly not for schools. And it's important. All right, we're not going to watch the whole thing, but if you'd like to, it's on brand new tube. Um, I found it on Angel Realm is the name of the, the brand new tube channel here. But what every parent fears the most, lockdowns caused 100% increase in those things right there. Yep, it's a good one. This right here, all right, you got to be careful what words we use, especially on this one. But this is one that will be interesting, I'm sure highly slanted, of course, and also a propaganda piece um, and to incite more of that, uh, you know, all white people being bad, all white people being a, 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 a premises, you know, things like this. Um, we already see that at play. We get it. It's, it's a division in so many ways, uh, a spiritual way and also a worldly way. 
and this has been a big part of it. This so HBO is doing a docu series on that letter before R, that one into the storm. It says, and it believes it's discovered the identity of that person. You gotta love the imagery they use, of course, the Masonic, the white rabbit. Hmm. All right. Six part docuseries premiering March 21st on HBO examines that letter and makes a convincing case for exactly who it is. And I'll just see if I can spoiler alert that here it comes. Um, what it looks, what it locates in that gloom among other things is the apparent identity of the person himself. And it's this name there. I've never even heard of that person of you. Ron Watkins. I don't know. So just thought I'd throw that out there. This is on Daily Beast. HBO's That Word docuseries, if you want to look it up and read that. I think I have another thing on here somewhere about that. This is more of that divisive madness and just how crazy it's getting out there with this stuff. They keep trying to separate us and divide us by race. You know, that's the big one, right? I normally don't do this on TikTok, but today I am livid. So I want your opinion to see if this kind of thing is justified. So I work at a retail store and I've worked there now for like a year and a half while well, I'm moving these racks and I didn't. corporate complaint against you for racial profiling because apparently I looked at her the wrong way and was assuming she didn't have money. See, I don't know if we played this last week or not. And I just, I don't know if this is the one that uh, triggered the, the takedown or not. I'm not sure. Oh, by the way, if you didn't know, I had to take down last week's show. I think I'd mentioned that earlier, but you know, my last attempt at this show we had to redo after 10 minutes. Um, yeah, I had to take that one down. There was a couple blocks on it, you know, with footage and stuff. So I wasn't sure if this was one of it, one of them or not. But one of them, I think, was the Wendy Williams talking to Dr. Oz and, and saying she was not going to take the V no matter what. Right. And she went on for like three minutes and really stood her ground. But I think that's one of them that that they didn't like. So anyway, just in case. This might be one, but woman fired from her job because she looked at person wrong way, black person wrong way. Um, again, it's not something about, oh, you know, it's uh, they're bad and this is no, it just she's talking about there's a corporate complaint because somebody felt she looked at a black person the wrong way. And I guess she was trying to move past him and just being nice and everything else. And just this came from out of nowhere. I mean, this is this person's side. You know, of course, you could always make that argument, but just another example of just more of that madness out there. And it's all about the, that division stuff, right? And sometimes it does create uh, hatred in people. I mean, it's all meant to trigger people and to make them unhinged. So it does actually happen that way. They act like they're this whole thing's against racism while they're creating it more and more in people. Sports Illustrated Swimsuits, first ever black and Asian transgender star model Lena Bloom makes history in stunning beach shoot as she reveals how she overcame homelessness to achieve her fashion dream. And we have to take a quick look here. This is the new, there we go. It's 2021. Everything's inverted. And it's all a, like a slap in the face, you know, to the creator. That's why it's so prominent. The confusion is so deep. Many people are confused. Oh, there it is. This is a, also on Daily Mail. Usually don't have to tell you. You can usually tell by the ads. It's, it's, a, it's an assault. It's like, I'm offended. It's an assault of ads. Anyway, that letter before R unmasked, right wing, you know, all those words trigger words, mysterious leaders named as Watkins. 
the son of 8chan owner in the new docu-series. British chick tries ranch dressing for the first time and has great reaction. I agree. This, this is great. Let's see here. It's a definitely an American thing, isn't it? Ranch dressing. So I guess this is her first attempt or first time actually trying it. And uh, let's see what she says. Tried American ranch dressing for the very first time the other day. And to say that I liked it was the understatement of the century. Like, this stuff is incredible. We can't get it here in the UK, which is criminal. But I had so many suggestions of what to put it on and what to eat it with. So I'm going to take some of them suggestions and try it right now. Up first, we have chicken strips. Oh, my God. It just makes it 10 times better. Oh my gosh, beautiful. So next up we have a chip, a french fry. This tastes so good on everything. Who came up with this? Celery. It just makes it so much better. Carrot sticks. Yeah, but it's awesome on everything, isn't it? A pizza slice fresh from the oven. Top. Oh. Oh, my God. <laughs> I guess that's kind of a doom break. Oh, this right here is uh, really, really crazy and really, really cool. Alien-looking creature transforming near ocean floor at over 3,700 feet. This is a video from way back in 2013. And... Hopefully it's going to play for us. It says this video was taken by a remotely operated vehicle at a depth of 3,753 feet in the Indian Ocean within close proximity to a drill wellhead. Near the end of the footage, you can see the creature getting caught up in the output from the ROV thrusters. The video has not been altered and was taken off the east coast of Africa. Okay, check this out. Wow, right? Look at this. What is that? <laughs> really? What, I mean, that looks like those things out of the Matrix that were keeping an eye on all the human pods. Right there, it's shifting, right? Shape shifted from this. Can you imagine floating out in the water and having one of these things tickling your toes? Ooh. Dave Chappelle predicted Pepe Le Pew getting removed from Space Jam 2. I think I have to refresh this one, too. Here we go. Check this out. You ever watch like a cartoon that you used to watch when you were little as an adult? Shit is, is wild shit. <laughs> Some wild shit. I mean, like I was with my nephew. We sitting there, we watching Peppy the Pew. And I say to my nephew, I say, now pay attention to this guy because he's funny. I used to watch him when I was little. And we watching Peppy the Pew, but I'm old now. I'm looking like, good God. What kind of fucking rapist is this guy? Like, take it easy. <laughs> My nephew was sitting there cracking up. <laughs> See, sometimes you gotta take the pussy like Peppy. Like, oh, oh, no. oh. You ever watch like a cartoon? Used to watch <laughs> There's that. New York City judge removes six year old from mother because she didn't wear a mask while dropping her off at school. Oof, that's scary. New York City judge, we got that. It was a normal day for Dr. Micheline Epstein, a family physician, when she went to drop her daughter off at the Birch Wathen, I know Epstein, right? I got the name. People are like, oh, I just it. Birch Wathen Lennox School on the Upper East Side last week until her entire life was turned upside down in an instant. The tearful mother explained in a phone call that her daughter was already inside the building and wearing a mask when the school nurse and school security attempted to force Dr. Epstein to wear a mask on the public street in front of the building where drop-off takes place. 
but the doctor refused. No one got physical or anything. She just refused to wear the mask. They were outside on the public sidewalk, Epstein's boyfriend, Jeff, explained, adding that the daughter was wearing a mask because they were required to, to go inside. The mother explained that the school nurse had came out and was aggressively demanding that she put on a mask, but she was already leaving and did not accept it. The next thing I know, my daughter is taken away from me, she cried. She was separated from her daughter's father, and they had a shared custody agreement where the child split times between the homes equally. The divorce, however, had been bitter. Following the confrontation at the school, Dr. Epstein left, but would soon find a letter from the expensive college prep school sent to her, her estranged husband, and the attorneys for both parties. The school is demanding that Dr. Epstein was no longer permitted to drop off or pick up her child from the school. Whoa, that's getting scary, folks. Really scary. If that wasn't already bad enough, the father used the notice about the mask situation to request an emergency hearing for full custody, which Justice Matthew Cooper granted after berating the already emotional, devastated mother. She's the love of my life, Dr. Epstein told the Gateway Punnett while trying and failing to hold back her tears. It's horrible. Please help us. Additionally, the court decided that the mother is not permitted to remove her daughter from the expensive school and told her that she does not have a choice in the matter. She is currently working three jobs to pay for not only her daughter's expenses, but the six lawyers she hired to fight what she is referring to as the kidnapping of her child. On Tuesday, she was not permitted to see or even speak to her daughter, even though it was her sixth birthday. To get two super supervised visits with her daughter per week, she will need to wear a mask inside her own home. Wow, man. I mean, this is that's where we are. That's what's forming, for sure. It's from Zero Hedge. Italy launches manslaughter investigation as teacher passes hours after getting the Azena, you know what, uh, V. That's about it. Just, just the headline on that one. Oh. I was hoping I could find the video. Oh, there it is. Yeah, this is uh, this is happening. A pastor who claims to heal people by farting on their face claims he's farting the Holy Spirit. This just goes to show you how incredibly uh, crazy things are in this world. Truly a honk honk situation, if you know what I mean. It's a double entendre. It's a honk honk and burp, burp. there he is. Farting on people's faces. There's another one. Farting the Holy Spirit right into him. This is, uh, yeah. The little demons are running amok, I'd, I'd say. Moderna nor to start testing the V on Canadian kids, but doses before next school year unlikely. Isn't it crazy how all of this stuff should have been tested four or five years, right? And it wasn't admittedly all of these you know first time in history they came out this fast with this little testing or so we're told i'm sure they were tested for years before and it's all part of it right but 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 now they're even admitting that they're going to be you know, testing you know now even on the kids I mean, they've gone through the you know, the elderly we're going to test and going to give it to the people in medical we're going to give it to the military blah 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 all kinds of people are already being tested. Now it's already that fast. It's moving really fast. Now they're openly talking about testing on the kids, the little kids. By most accounts, Canadian kids are not expected to receive a V this year, let alone before the next school year in September, but a select few may be able to receive an early dose through clinical trials expected to launch in various locations. Now they're openly testing on humanity just openly on the public. It's just, that's it, right? Yeah, it's, it's unbelievable. This is a uh, CBC Canadian, Canadian news. Oh, now this one, I think it's a news story. Let's see. Yeah. You know, we saw this one, coming um uh, something like this i'd even mentioned you know we did a live show a while back with 
was with days days of Noah and unplug them. And even on there, I'd mentioned that that's something I expect to happen sometime, I'm sure soon, now with the new selection and everything in place, that we'll have one of these types of incidents. You know, another mass bang bang, a white person, right? There are gonna be some racial components there. And it'll one way or the other lead to the white Sahaha premises, right? Or, you know, a Christian connection, a religious connection, more of those types of things. And it's not because I'm an oracle or anything like that. It's because I know the program. We've been watching the program play out for years. We know some of their tactics. And this is just one of those go-tos, isn't it? But anyway, we have this one. All right, we want to take a look at the suspect now who authorities arrested in connection with the deadly shootings. He's 21-year-old Robert Aaron Long of Woodstock, an extensive manhunt coming to an end in Crisp County more than nine hours ago. That's about 150 miles south of Atlanta. Asian hate is circulating widely across social media this morning amidst the calls for prayers and support, also calls for action. And some of our local leaders, including Georgia Governor Brian Kemp, have been sharing his prayers for the family. We heard also a tweet coming down from Senator Raphael Warnock overnight who said it's seen and important. We have to keep standing up, speaking out, rallying together, he says, and fighting for change. We cannot lose hope. And you can see that hashtag again being used. State Senator Michelle Al, Dr. Michelle Al of the 48th District and NY and NYPD spokesperson. Anyway, you we we get it. Right? We we and you know for anyone who's ever harmed in any of these things when these things happen, because they happen quite a bit, of course, prayers go out to the family. This is something we don't want to see happen. No one wants to see these kinds of things happen. But as we investigate these types of things throughout the years, we find there's also a lot of common denominators. Um, they're not exactly organic situations, right? Especially the more we look into some of the characters. But, uh, you know, please look back to some of my videos for more on that subject. It's out there. Woman gets into mass dispute with convenience store employee. employee. Things go way off rails. Let's check this out. More of this mask madness and people becoming unhinged. It's a movie. It's a movie. It's just, it's a movie. It's a crazy movie. It's idiocracy and and a mix of all kinds of dystopian science fiction horror films. Escape from New York literally playing out in so many ways. Uh, this is just a really crazy explosion. This is a fireworks stash. Somebody had a fireworks stash in a neighborhood and it popped. Crazy, crazy, crazy. You would have a, a stash too. Apparently, a big stash of just explosives. That's essentially what they are, right? Just a big stash sitting around in your garage, middle of the neighborhood. 
b-baller basketballer was a little too full of himself and then check out what happens the school prince the school president walks up on him in a little bit P&O Cruises says VED customers will still have to wear masks and social distance. At least the headline. Family kicked off flight for not, for, for not forcing four-year-old autistic son to wear a mask. Says he had a medical note from his physician stating that he's exempt. I think this is it. Oh, unavailable. Trusting that everybody can effectively take these preventative measures. Once the door is closed, if we have to ask you more than once to cover your nose, mouth, put your mask on, we are not going to be rude. We are not going to be nasty. We are going to simply take your seat number and your name. And when we get where we're going, you will either be arrested, fine, but you will also be placed on the no-fly list, meaning you will not be able to fly any airline for the rest of your life. So please, again, I'm saying this because there is usually always that one person, and I really don't want to have to do the extra paperwork and do more than I'm intended for my job. So if you do not agree or want to, you know, do what needs to be done, you are more than welcome to exit at this time. We have about nine more minutes left, but I want to give everybody a fair opportunity that you know what is happening. Also, I'm not really sure what's going on with all these videos going viral with passengers attacking each other. And or flight attendants, let me remind you, we are government officials. It is government property. If you choose to act out of content or character on this aircraft, you'll be arrested and face 20 years imprisonment and you also receive a $250,000 fine. Wow. Right. If you want to watch that, it's Spirit Airlines flight attendant threatens to arrest. It looks like the first part of it. You can check that out. Crazy. You just see there's love and the authority. That, that dude's love and the authority. Loving it. Spotify now censoring long song lyrics that contain misinformation. Rut row. Music icon Ian Brown revealed that Spotify had deleted his anti lockdown song. Little Seed Big Tree, which was originally released last September. Spotify stream, Spotify stream the streams and censor artists like they have with my last song, Took It Down. Just put it down the memory hole. Free expression is revolution, he said. Oh, well, check out what he was saying, though. It's the song lyrics. Masonic lockdown in your hometown. hometown. Masonic lockdown. Can you hear me now? From the top down, soul shock down, state shakedown, mass breakdown, global orders riding over borders, get behind your doors for the NW order. Wow. Okay. Good. Good stuff. Good lyrics. Good lyrics. The former Stone Roses frontman asserted. Oh, okay, that's cool. You guys ever heard of the Stone Roses? They're great. Great band from way back in the early 90s. Late 80s, early 90s. Former Stone Roses frontman asserted he would never sing to a crowd who would be V'd as a condition for attendance. Never, ever. Okay, so he's speaking out. Wow, he put it right out there, didn't he? Good stuff. 
journalist proclaims she would love to die from the AZV if it helps others. A Norwe Norwegian journalist bizarrely claimed she would love to die from the AZV if it meant other people in Europe were not discouraged from taking it. The statement was made in the headline of Lynn Week's article, which literally translates into she would love to die for this. Gross. I don't want to read all that. There's the picture. Oof. Prop. Propaganda. Comedian Bill Burr accused of being racist for marrying a black woman. That's how crazy this world is. Burr was in the news after he appeared at the Grammy Awards to present an award for Best Tropical Latin Album and made some jokes. Let's see. I think there's a clip of it. I'm hoping there is. Come on, man. There we go. Okay. This is what got him into a lot of trouble. Remember, he's married to a black woman. Yep. But I guess it doesn't matter nowadays because honk, honk. Some people are getting the Holy Spirit farted right into their face. I mean, we know it's not the real Holy Spirit, all this, but it's a honk, honk world in so many ways. Was I the only one who wanted to kill himself during that piano solo? Uh, <laughs> I bought a suit for this. I thought I was going to be on TV. I'm such a moron. I am losing so much money right now. All right, shout out to all the rock stars that I wanted to meet tonight who are watching at home instead. I'm talking to you, Don Dawkin. All right? What, I'm old. That was my first concert. All right, here are the next categories. All right. Hey, how many uh, feminists are, like, going nuts? So how, why is this cis white male doing all this Latino stuff? Uh, was I the only one who wanted to kill himself during that piano solo? All right, so there you go. And, of course... Now we know that, you know, rut row, and here comes the cancel mob. Okay, there we go. Moving on. Professor warns post Crown V Society is a national obedience contest. Yep. Says young people will suffer the most. We talked about that. We're seeing that happen in, uh, in America. You are not going to be seeing those who are in control, you know, doing things. Uh, for the best of the average Americans. And uh, it'll be more of an obedience type situation, compliance, you know, ultimately. Right, but it's incremental. Grammy celebs blasted over face mask hypocrisy. Of course, none of these people are going to be wearing the silly face masks. But they'll do advertisements and PSAs and all that stuff. Video of Fauci and Chuck Todd say more pandemics coming because of climate change. We know that's a big part of Agenda 20 and also Agenda 21. Okay, we got it. We know. All a part of the plan, eh, boys? Oh, crap. How you doing? James with I, I think I was wanting to check the clip out, so sorry I, st I uh, cut that off. Because that may have been... Uh, that other clip of uh, Fauci's neck not looking like it's connected. And this right here, earlier we watched the uh, the man from Facebook putting it on the line, right? Just really saying, hey, this stuff's getting out of control. Uh, you know, we need to be stopped, right? Well, this is what happened after they approached him out in the street and tried to get him to talk. James Olino with Project Veritas. Sir, you told one of our undercover reporters that, quote, Facebook and Google need to be broken up, sir. You said this, sir? Yeah, but you need to step in and break up Google and Facebook. I'll make less money, but it's a better thing for the world. You're the global planning lead of Facebook. Do you have a comment on this, sir? Sir, why would you say that? Sir, these are the two most powerful companies in the world. Why would you say something like that? They must be stopped. <laughs> the public needs to know, sir. Uh, you've probably seen this one now a few times. It's funny how all the mainstream news, even RT is doing it. They're uh, calling it an optical illusion, but it was clearly a green screen type situation here. But you've probably seen this just in case, just 
watch the lower part of the screen. Optical illusion. Oh, that's green screen. Even from this angle. Have you decided when you're able to share thoughts with other countries? Is it allies or neighbors first? Yeah. We get it, though. We know. We know. I mean, other countries, other leaders around the world, they see it. All part of the plan, though, right? Okay, this is cool. I'm just going to show you this first clip. It's on Mavi 777. It's a short clip, but this is the only place I've seen it. He gives credit here at the bottom. YouTube channel Dengism. So if you guys want to look that up, look up the uh, original source, maybe. But it's interesting, huh? It's pretty wild. Whoa. What do you think? Sign of the dimensions shifting? Stranger things coming in? This is a, if your kids watched Cardi B on the Grammys last night, you may need to take him to church. Yeah, I've got a new shorter video I'm almost done with, and I've got some of this footage and stuff in there. And just... Anyway, I don't know if you guys saw any of this. It was a terrible, terrible, terrible. This is, uh, but this is, it's a great. Uh, example, a physical example of just how Babylon's fallen. Really, right? How America Babylon has fallen. Uh, literally, you know, strippers on stage, and this is supposed to be the, used to be at least, you know, something for families, for everyone to gather around, talk about truly talented people at least. Sold out to the devil, sure, but some truly talented people at least, many years ago, singing on stage, performing, but this is what it is now. This is the Grammys. So good. Let it all fall. The quicker, the better. This is from uh, just yesterday. Somebody posted this at the grocery store today. And I showed you guys this news story last week that they were going to be doing this in certain grocery stores in America. I believe it's, yeah, most all around America. I don't know which stores. I can't remember where they'll be labeling them you know, like this, LGBT owned or Latino owned or black owned, and that's going to be a new thing. But it's more of that division type stuff too, you know. I doubt there'll be a white owned. I doubt that. Because that's the one they're, you know, that the, the NWO is erasing, is trying to erase that element. Uh, everything else is fine because it's it's going to be a one big beautiful rainbow by the time they're done. At, at least in their minds. There we go. It'll just cause more division, right? American Airlines says they're looking into incident where U.S. special presidential envoy for climate. Oof. John Kerry, who's a bonesman, skull and bones, Illuminati was spotted maskless, oh dear, on the flight from Boston to Washington. They know. They know. They already know. Sometimes they get caught on camera. Doctor, oh yeah, here's another one. This is one where, look, it looks like his neck's not connected at the bottom. We saw that clip from last week. And now this was just put up 
the 17th, so yesterday. Pretty sure this is something new, but just look at his neck. He's talking about giving, uh, he hopes to be able to V children as young as six months by the, by the beginning of 2022. Six months to so see, right? They didn't, the way the story goes, they didn't do four to five years of testing on the one they just put out on the population after just a year. Now they're openly going after children. This is fast. Now they're openly going to go after children to just start being them, the little ones. And we saw earlier they also want to test things out on some of the little ones. Anyway, look at his neck, though. What do you think's going on here? Is it CGI? Is it a deep fake? Is it a mask? High school students, it looks like they will be available to get vaccinated in the beginning of the fall, very likely for the fall term. With regard to children, we're doing an AIDS uh, an age de-escalation study in elementary school children from 12 to 9, 9 to 6, 6 to 2, and two mo six months to two years. We anticipate we'll have enough data to be able to vaccinate these younger children by the first quarter of 2022. For high school students, it looks like they will be available to get vaccinated in the beginning of the fall, very likely for the fall term. With regard to children, we're doing an AIDS uh, an age de-escalation. See right there, right? It's like, yeah, I don't know. Why not? It's a honk honk. Anything goes. This is a cool capture. This is over on Disclosed Screen, the Grim Reefar YouTube channel. And it says, do you know what kind of fish this is? And maybe you guys know. He's got arms and legs. It's wild looking, huh? Pela primeira vez in my vida. Vi um peixe esquisito, nunca vi desse. Peixe no sei, ué. Ele tá peixe feio, Paulo. Diga aí. Que desgraça é isso, hein? Tempo, já, já vi já. É? Desse peixe? peixe? É um peixe. Nunca vi falar. Não, não. Rapaz, esse peixe é esquisito demais. Não tem... valor pra trás dela pra procurar essa vida. É, tem pé, pé, rapaz, estranha. O bicho não sei. Ele tem uma boca grande, velho. Um bolinhozão desse, velho. Tá bem ali, Weird, huh? Did you eat that? I wouldn't. Jim Saki blames Orange Man for uh, the Atlanta mass bang bang. Says no question Trump's rhetoric caused it. But just more of that stuff using using Orange Man and anybody associated with him, right? We got to lock them all up, uh, re-educate them. Robert Aaron Long expressed shame for prawn addiction, his ex-roommate says, and that's the name of the kid that apparently, apparently, allegedly, apparently, this is the kid that did it. Let's see here. Tyler Bayless, 35, told Reuters he spent several months living in a halfway house for addicts named Maverick Recovery with Robert Long, who has been charged with eight counts of murder and one count of aggravated assault. The two were in the facility together in late 2019 and early 2020, and Long had been treated for sex addiction, and he frequented massage parlors for explicitly sexual activity, Bayless said. Bayless, who was treated for drug addiction, said Long was deeply religious. Okay, there we go. There's the religious. And would become very emotional, distraught that he frequented these places. Nico Strom, who went to high school with Long, described him as a super nice, super Christian. 
and very quiet, adding that Long walked around the school with a Bible. Oh boy, I told you there'd be some kind of... Bayless said Long would describe several of his sexual addiction relapses, as he called them. He would have a deep feeling of remorse and shame and say he needed to return to prayer and return to God. Authorities say Long may suffer from a sex addiction and potentially was heading to Florida in a plot to attack some type of porn industry. Right. So that's what we know so far. We'll see. See how that develops. See what happens. What happens. Usually some shenanigans. Former president of the Drag Queen Story Hour advocate, or NLGB, all that advocate, and children's court judge busted for child prawn. County. Why am I not surprised on this? I'm, I'm just, here you go. Judge is spending the night in a Dane County jail facing child pornography charges. 38-year-old Judge Brett Blummy was elected in August. Charges are expected tomorrow. Stephanie Haynes explains what led to his arrest. Online records show Judge Brett Blummy is a children's court judge here at the Youth and Family Justice Center in Wauwatosa. Now officials say another judge will take over his cases as needed. The Wisconsin Department of Justice says special agents arrested the judge, quote, following an investigation into multiple uploads of child pornography through a kick messaging application account in October and November 2020. And, quote, based upon records linking those uploads to the defendant, DCI investigators obtained search warrants for the defendant, his chambers, his vehicle, and his residences in Milwaukee and Dane counties. According to the judge's campaign website, he was elected in August 2020. His biography reads in part, quote, Brett is a community activist, experienced attorney, and devoted dad. He has spent his career fighting for the most marginalized in our community. Before that, his website says he was the president and CEO of Cream City Foundation, which is an LGBTQ plus advocacy group in Milwaukee. His website also says he served as a public defender and writes he got his start in politics working for Congresswoman Gwen Moore and Mayor Tom Barrett. Mayor Barrett in a statement writing, quote, the allegations are alarming. Before he was elected to the bench, the judge served as the chair of the Board of Zoning Appeals and appointed board in city government. The reports of the arrest came as a complete surprise. Chief Judge Mary Trigiano says she's unable to comment because the case is pending. I also tried to get a hold of the judge for comment as well, but have not heard back. In Wauwatosa, Stephanie Haynes, TMJ4 News. Stephanie, thank you. There we wanted to know how judges in Wisconsin are prosecuted. This says this may look like a zombie apocalypse, but it's actually Philadelphia. This is actually kind of a sad footage. It says um, Kensington Avenue is known for its massive drug problem and has city's third highest crime rate. The mayor and local Philly political class have ignored neighborhoods like this for decades, and now they're zombie wastelands. really is like one of those dystopian movies society crumbling it looks like it doesn't it
Anyway, I think you get the idea. Anybody out there listening from Philadelphia? You, what's been your experience? Have you seen that kind of a thing? It's not just there. Don't feel bad. And it's happening in different pockets all around America. And really all around the world, but more so in America, that, more than we've ever seen. Right? Customer at Wingstop has refused refund and goes, cuckoo, cuckoo. Check this out. Cell phone video shows a man wild about wings getting upset over his order at an antelope wing stop last Saturday. I was telling him to calm down. I was like, you don't want to go to jail. You don't want to go to jail. You Customer Theron Trujillo caught the violent reaction on camera of the man grabbing the register, slamming it to the ground twice before throwing it out the window. Definitely when I seen that, I was kind of shook up a little bit. They were definitely shook up behind. The ladies behind were definitely shook up. The manager of the wing stop tells me the man claimed he was missing several wings and wanted a refund, which she says is not allowed under company policy for online orders. Regulars at the store who have experienced order issues in the past are stunned from the wing rack. It's definitely shocking. A little over uh, overcompensating for five wings. <laughs> but I mean, I understand his anger, definitely not his actions. I feel bad for society. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that about sums it up. Oh, this is just, I don't know, this is kind of weird, kind of funny. Imprisoned idiot interrupts judge to fire his bum-ass dude lawyer. <laughs> Check this out. Would you like it? Out? I yeah, I'd like to fire my attorney and represent myself for the rest of this case, please, because he hasn't done anything that I've asked him. I, I, I sent him a whole paper of questions to ask her and ask him to come see me before this court date. He has it. Paul Gibson's a bum-ass dude, and he should not practice this profession because he's not doing anything for All right, well, that went well. That was pretty uh, much that. They cut him off pretty quick. Oscar-nominated actor Ellen Page comes out as trans named Elliot Page. But this has been a pretty big story. This is her uh, story here. And, yeah, that's been a really big story out there. And it's a tough one. It's a tough one. You know, we've that's, that's a tough one to have that on your mind and heart. And... Uh, but, you know, it's getting a lot of traction, this story. And I always feel like the underlying message is, you know, seeing, again, how worldly, how worldly this world is, how satanic this system is, and everything being inverted and everything switched around. But it's that the, the underlying message is that it's against the creator himself. It's like, you know, no, you, you got it wrong. I'm actually this. And that's not to you know, poo-poo this kind of thing away. That's That's got to be a, obviously a really tough. Not everyone is afflicted with that kind of, I guess, spirit, you know, those kinds of feelings. It's a pretty small percentage, that it, but, but it's portrayed like 90% in everything. And we know why. They, they use it for a part of the agenda. It's a Baphomet-type system anyway, right? After all, that's kind of that meaning. And for our last clip, if this will come up, that's the other thing with all these corporations. Of course, you know the media calls it going woke, whatever. But all these all these corporations, more and more, are um, jumping right in and see now they're you know trying to sell Pantene Pantene products, and they're using this same thing here. And it's all featuring um, children. It's the rise of the rainbow children, like I always say. But it's all featuring the children that are transitioning over. And it's you know the soft music, and it's all about love, and it's right. What's that? 
It's part that's part of the uh, agenda. The agenda. All right, there we go. And that actually concludes the show. So let me jump over here and throw a little background on there. Say hi to the chat real quick, like. Hey guys, how you doing? Thank you guys so much for being here. And a big shout out to everybody, man. Thank you guys for being here. Hope you enjoyed the show. Thanks for bearing with me. Uh, the first attempt at this show, of course, the audio is off for like 10 minutes. Uh, finally, I stopped that and we got this one going. I'm glad we got back on track. Just stay subbed to this channel. This is where the show is always going to be. I mentioned earlier I had to, to remove last week's show. A couple things got tagged on there. And I guess they didn't like it. So uh, they gave me an option to at least re uh, remove the whole show. I couldn't just clip out the bits. I had to remove the whole show. So had to do that. Happens sometimes. But hey, we're still in it. We're still fighting. <laughs> we're still here. That's what matters. So thanks again, you guys. All of you for being, for being here. Special shout out to our friends overseas that stay up late or get up early for this. Also, big shout out to the moderators. Massive shout out to my Patreon and PayPal supporters, folks. Thank you so much. I've got a smaller video I'm almost done with. I'm not going to put it on YouTube, but it'll probably be up tomorrow or the next day. Check my links below underneath the player. Definitely bookmark my website. Everything goes there. I have a bigger video I should be done with within a week for YouTube. I'm really excited to get finished, <laughs> but show you guys what I got. And, uh, I think that catches us up. Yeah, check all my links below if you're into uh, emergency food supplies, if you'd like to get a little bit prepped up just in case. There's a link below with specials. Check that out. It's from My Patriot Supply. And uh, good stuff. I've ordered some. My family has, so I can I can attest it's good stuff. And uh, that's about it, man. Uh, you know what? Thanks once again, guys. I always like to end these shows with a short prayer, so if you will allow me, I'll just say, Heavenly Father, thank you once again for the platform. Thanks for all these wonderful people. And thanks that we can talk about all the things we talk about, try to keep it in context. And uh, just thanks for being with us in these crazy times. We definitely need you, Lord, and help us all to stay on track, stay on course, stay connected to you. And uh, to not be in fear, no fear. And so thank you, Lord, and I love you. And in Jesus' name I pray, amen. All right, guys. Hey, that's it. Thank you once again for being here. Uh, like I said, be looking over the next few days for a shorter little music video I'm doing and a bigger video coming up on YouTube. And as always, next Thursday night, I'll be back with another show. And maybe even before that, I don't know. I'm still going to be doing live shows over on my uh, Scariest Movie Ever channel too. So something will be coming up. I'm not sure what. <laughs> okay, but something's coming. All right. Until uh, next time, you all have a wonderful weekend. And uh, I'll talk to you soon.